um, well, I guess we all know why, we're, why we are here. And on behalf of Memorial, we are saddened to report um, the passing away of Coach John Outlaw. Um, obviously, John Outlaw meant a lot to this community, not only to this community, but to the state. And his name was even known nationwide. He not only had an impact on athletics and those kids who participated in athletics, he had an impact on everybody. And uh, I had the opportunity through uh, Channel 15, the City Hall Update, to, to interview him on several occasions. And it's, he was just a phenomenal man. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But um, I think we, we at least we can't per proceed with the conference without mentioning that about uh, Coach Outlaw. Um, I just have a few comments on behalf of the hospital, and then I'm going to turn it over to these gentlemen. Um, Coach Outlaw presented to our emergency department at Memorial Medical Center here in Wapkin. Uh, this morning, he passed away um, at death at 5.53 excuse me, a.m. this morning. Um, the preliminary cause of death is cardiac arrest. We do know, we can tell you that EMS called to his home this morning. Um, he had collapsed and EMS immediately began working on him when he was brought into the emergency department. Um, he was non-responsive. Um, again, the time of death was ruled at 5.53 a.m. Um, the Justice of the Peace has ordered an autopsy, which is uh, scheduled to be returned next week preliminary results. Um, but on, behalf of, on behalf of the Memorial family, we offer our condolences to Coach Outlaw's family, his friends, his co-workers, and everybody whose lives he touched. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Roy Knight, who is the superintendent of Lufkin Schools, and then you can introduce your, your coaches as well. Yeah, for the record, guys, I'm Roy Knight, superintendent of Lufkin ISD, and our audience today is our school board president, Mr. Trent Ashby, uh, our assistant superintendent for human resources, Mr. Johnny Giles, who, by the way, was served in that capacity when John Outlaw was hired uh, 17 years ago. Uh, our high school principal, who's worked uh, most recently with, uh, with Coach Outlaw, as a matter of fact, for the past seven years. Uh, our defensive coordinator, Todd Quick, who gave Todd his very first job right out of college years ago, and same thing about our offensive coordinator, uh, Scott Green. Uh, it's with great sadness that uh, that our community shares uh, this tragedy of Coach Child Outlaw's death. He passed away early this morning uh, after his ritual 4:30 run. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Coach Outlaw was a, was a man of habits and rituals, and uh, neither rain nor snow nor dark of night got in the way of his ritualistic run. Uh, he collapsed in his home this morning and. Jana said then was uh, EMS was contacted and he was uh, brought to the hospital here. Uh, our community has lost a great champion for children. The greatest I have ever known. Uh, I've lost a best friend. Uh, all that being said, often what does that mean to a community, what happens next, uh, how would John want to be remembered. Uh, in that regard, I'd tell you the last thing John Outlaw wants to be remembered as is a, is a football coach. What he always wanted to be remembered as is a, is a person who cared about kids. As a matter of fact, you've heard him say routinely in any interview you've ever done with him that, uh, uh, that he referred to his players our kids as, as children, and he treated them that way. Uh, perhaps his greatest legacy is the fact that he treated every single child as though he were there, they were his own. Sometimes that meant he hugged their necks when they needed their necks hugged and he got after their rear ends when they needed their rear ends gotten after. Sometimes that was the same kid in the same day. He'll be remembered by thousands and thousands uh, uh, and, and there will never be enough appropriate ways for us to honor the legacy that this man leaves for us. 
uh, on behalf of the family, they have asked uh, in lieu of flowers that uh, any donations be sent to the Lufkin High School Alumni Association uh, for the Coach John Outlaw Scholarship Fund. Uh, and that will be honored through their website at uh, Lufkin High School Alumni Association .com. Uh, we expect the, uh, the funeral to be midweek. The arrangements are currently pending. Uh, Francie, John's wife, and son Stephen uh, both have, have expressed uh, their great appreciation for, uh, for all the outpouring and generosity. Uh, I've been asked earlier about a, what I call a social media flash gathering uh, at, uh, at Lufkin High School. That, that, that is likely that that is a, a group of our high school football players who, who just want to gather together and grieve privately. Uh, it's my understanding that will be sometime this afternoon. It will certainly facilitate that as a, as a schoolhouse. Uh, that being said, we, we expect the, uh, the funeral, and, and, and I'm speaking uh, strictly in, in a pending fashion, we expect the funeral will most likely be, uh, as I said earlier, midweek uh, at the Lufkin Middle School Auditorium. Uh, it's the largest school facility we have that seats uh, roughly 1,200. Uh, all other arrangements are pending, and, and we'll notify you uh, as, as, soon as, uh, as soon as those arrangements are we expect that will be Monday. Uh, Francie is certainly aware that these are the Christmas holidays. Uh, and take on a different kind of tone for their family uh, this weekend. Uh, Mr. Mark Smith uh, uh, followed me as a high school principal. Uh, we have certainly <coughs> really unique kind of relationships with Coach Outlaw, and uh, uh, I'd ask each of these gentlemen here to call me. You know, Coach Outlaw <clears throat> was a great man and, and worked with athletes every day. Uh, I got to see Coach Outlaw in a different light as, a, as an educator, uh, the care for children. Uh, they walked our halls each day. Uh, was a, was a, a parent, if you were in our halls or been at our school, then you know that uh, Coach Outlaw was there for, for not only the athletes, athletes that are uh, men and women, but for our kids at Lufkin High School. We, we joke about this every day. If you come to our high school in the morning, <clears throat> you'll see us standing in front, and Coach Outlaw is the one that will whistle and get the day started for our kids, and we will miss him greatly for that. Uh, but he is a <coughs> great educator, and uh, we will miss him. My name's Todd Quick. I've been uh, fortunate enough to be with Coach Outlaw for 26 seasons. Uh, I've seen him change from, from in 1985 until he got here. It was all, you know, he got a little bit softer. But the one thing that he did was he always cared for the kids, and that was the number one thing that he did. And you've heard, you'll hear everybody say this, and you'll hear every kid say this. That was his number one thing. It had nothing to do with football, and football was a part of it. But treating the kids right, making them act right in the classroom, teaching them things that they're going to use later on was his number one goal. And he was he was always giving. He was always never wanted anything in return for us coaches, my family, and uh, uh, it would truly be missed. Uh, truly be missed. Scott, Scott Green, been with Coach Hell all 16 years. Uh, not too many people in the world can say that I, I've worked for one man for 16 years, and I'm, I'm blessed, very fortunate to be a part of this staff and work with these people on a daily basis. Um, he's a special man and has a whole lot of special people that love him, and his, he'll be missed more than, more than a lot of people. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, a lot of people are born with daddies in the world. Everybody here has one. Um, the last 16 years, he's been like a second dad to me. And walking in an office on a daily basis is going to change drastically. Uh, the influence he's had on me and my family. And I say for the ones here as well. Um, it's tough, tough to swallow. 
I, sometimes you sit back and think, man, I could go back to work, I'll see him again, but it's not going to happen. Um, just keep his family in your prayers. Keep these guys in your prayers as well. Um, we thank you all. Before, before we open up for questions, just let, let me say that uh, the, uh, the Gibson Funeral Home is, uh, is handling the, the arrangements, and uh, there's an opportunity on their website, uh, gibsonfuneralhome.com, uh, for folks who are, are either in Afghanistan or Iraq uh, or wherever they may be to express their condolences through, through, uh, through Gibson's website. And so I, I'd encourage folks who, who can't call, don't have the numbers, or are not physically able to, uh, to visit with, uh, with Francie and Stephen uh, to access that website uh, to communicate uh, using that social media. Sure. Well, any, any questions at this time? Yes, sir. Stephen Yates with Yates Media. Uh, Roy, did Coach Outlaw show any signs of any ailment prior to today? You know, the only ailment he ever showed signs of was just being hard-headed, Stephen. Uh, he, he ran every single day, and, and he's the only 57-year-old man I knew that was, that was capable of doing that. Uh, you and I both knew him as this skinny, worn-out old coach who looked 80 years old, and uh, that was a wear and tear of the job, but, but nothing heart-related uh, at all. Uh, this, this was completely unexpected, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions? Um, in the interim, who's going to take over for is the interim AD or you know, how exactly? Uh, good question. We're, we're, as, as you see here today, we've got John always worked hard to surround himself with, with very capable assistant coaches. And um, we'll be making a decision in the short and how we'll feel, how we'll do that in the interim. That hadn't been decided yet. But, but I, I'm very confident that, that we have the kind of folks uh, on our staff to, uh, to feel that very capably, Josh. Thank you. Other questions? Guys, I'll just leave you with this, with this one comment. Uh, folks who don't know John Outlaw or who never interviewed him uh, would just see this crusty old coach uh, on the sidelines, weather-worn, uh, with that cap on and uh, sometimes those oversized sunglasses that he tended to wear and not really get to know the man. But if you ever interviewed him, you ever talked to him personally, you knew he'd tune up and cry at the drop of a hat when he began to talk about his children. Uh, the information you hear up here in, in, in this printed version, uh, in the scripted version, is uh, one, actually two games out of eight, he actually has 302 wins, 89 losses and three ties. And that's not what John Outlaw would ever have anybody remember. He'd have you remember him about, uh, about his relationship uh, with his coaches and his kids. And uh, I, I, I think those of you who honor him in that way have done so appropriately. Uh, I'll let you all know uh, as, as soon as I know uh, about the funeral arrangements of the Mr. Giles? On behalf of Concerned Black Men Luck and recognition we honored Coach Outlaw two Saturdays ago but what he did to this community and in all parts and all students and we we just certainly so appreciative that we were able to conduct that honor service for Coach Outlaw. Thank you John and I, I and there'll be many they, they were the, actually the most recent group to honor him with his latest accomplishments and, and certainly nothing more fitting uh, than that for, for, uh, for John. Some folks have asked me, well, what, what makes him so much more successful than any other head coach that we've ever had here? And, and I can explain that easily. John had more in common with our kids. Uh, he was raised the, uh, the son of a, of a single parent and a grandparent. He was raised by his mom and his grandma, like many of our kids. Uh, he'll tell you that those two women and his coaches were the most influential people in his life. And uh, last Thursday, a week ago Thursday, uh, he and I had lunch with Mark, and, as we do on every Thursday. And uh, uh, we were talking about what the future looked like and what it might look, look like and what a different <coughs> realignment may be. And, and John used one of his favorite sayings, nothing good lasts forever. And uh, that 
certainly is, is reinforced today. Thank you all for your time and attention. We'll stick around for those of you who want some in there with us. We'll introduce you to the point. Thank you. Thank you for your presence, guys. I can't express that enough to you.